we're in the midst of a huge transformation where our peers, communities, and workplaces are all really melding into one. Welcome to Reimagining Company Culture. My name is Christina Giordano, and I'm a partnerships manager here at All Voices, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. Today, I'm excited to welcome our next guest, Clarissa Moses. She is the manager of diversity, equity, and inclusion at JetBlue Airways. Clarissa, how's your day going? It is going well. I'm happy to be here. Yes, if you could start off by telling our listeners a little bit about yourself, including your pronouns, and this can be anything, but what's recently brought you joy? Sure. Um, well, it is great to be here. Um, again, Clarissa Moses, Manager of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at JetBlue. Um, I go by she, her, hers uh, pronouns. And um, yeah, it is, it is just great to be here. A little bit about myself. Um, been working in the diversity, equity, and inclusion space for quite a while. Um, had some experience working with uh, social justice organizations, uh, working within diversity uh, recruitment, engagement, and training space, and really just found a passion for this work and really uh, found the passion for creating access to that opportunity. Um, so I, I love what I do and I love that I'm able to do it at JetBlue. Um, I love to travel. So it really, JetBlue was able to mar marriage that love for travel, love for cultures and different experiences with um, you know, my love for diversity, equity and inclusion. Um, one recent thing that is uh, brought me joy, I'm recently engaged. Congratulations. Um, <laughs> yes. So um, I'm actually, my fiance is also in diversity, equity, and inclusion. So we have a lot of conversations around this. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. How recent are we talking? So I uh, was, I got engaged in January. So toward the end of January. That's exciting. Oh my gosh. Well, congratulations. I'm so Thank happy for you. you. What a great answer to the question. Nobody has answered it uh, with the recently been engaged. So that's awesome. <laughs> um, could you tell us a little bit more about your why for getting into diversity, equity, and inclusion work and how your personal journey has really led you to JetBlue? Yeah, sure. So I always say diversity and inclusion actually found me. Um, because I, when I was in school, diversity, equity, and inclusion was not a major that right. you could go to. Um, and I actually was an event planner. I planned weddings. <laughs> um, I planned weddings and sweet 16s and all these different events. I did fundraising events. Um, and my first role in the diversity, equity, and inclusion space, I really got into it because it was primarily around event planning. Um, and it was uh, creating these diversity recruitment fairs, these networking opportunities to uh, connect diverse candidates with employers. Mm -hmm. And what really drove me to get connected to the work was the impact that I saw I was making. So while it's great to plan weddings, I have one coming up, so I understand. Um, I really loved the fact that the work that I was doing had a greater impact. I saw that I was able to create that access to opportunity. I saw I had conversations with people who really felt like their life was changed by having someone who was championing, championing that and really advocating for them. Um, so that really just grew into a larger career in not only just creating these recruitment opportunities, but let's look internally. How are we retaining talent? How are we making sure that people feel included at work? How are we just communicating diversity, equity, and inclusion and its importance? Um, and all of those things, everything that I love from presenting to training to event planning to communications really was able to come together within diversity, equity, and inclusion and allow me to make an impact. So um, that's, I would say, is, is my why. I'm doing meaningful work and it, it just, it makes me feel good. Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of folks are looking at diversity, equity, and inclusion now from a really deeper lens past programming and event planning, which is a really important part of that as well, but really looking at the business in terms of, like you said, communication, um, recruitment, retention, promotion, and all of these different factors, also the product and services that you're providing to your um, consumers as well, talking more kind of generally around um, JetBlue's culture, how would you really define um, what it's like to, to work at the company? Yeah, so JetBlue is, is unique. Um, so in JetBlue, if you go into any part of any of the support centers, um, you will see JetBlue's values everywhere. <laughs> and I think that that makes the company, one, one thing that makes the company and the culture so unique, because those values 
really do drive how we do business and how our um, how we expect our crew members to really be able to live those values. Um, <clears throat> so, and and I think one one of the values is uh, fun. And I think that's very different for a lot of companies. You yeah. don't think of fun being a value, but when you think about fun, it's not just about making jokes and, and having a good time, but really thinking about making sure that our crew members feel comfortable, that we can have fun, that we can be passionate about the work that we do and we can enjoy it together. And when we think about that with diversity, equity and inclusion, diversity, equity and inclusion becomes not just something that we should do, but it's more fun that way. It's something that is, you know, it's more fun to have different perspectives. It's more fun to be able to have different people in the room and connecting with different people. So really allows diversity, equity, and inclusion to be embedded into our culture. And I think those values, safety, integrity, passion, caring, all of those values really do uh, come through within our culture. I would also say that, um, inspiring humanity is our mission mm -hmm. and we really are aiming to lead by example so it's not just about us being able to showcase our humanity um through all of the work that we're doing but us to be able to inspire that in others and our customers our crew members the airline industry at at, at large um so we we really showcase that it's not just about us it's really about everyone yeah, absolutely. And I think especially to your point around inspiring humanity over this past year, a lot of people are looking for inspiration. A lot of people are looking for that kind of shining light and hope because of the pandemic. We've seen so many changes um, over this past year. And I also wanted to ask how you've seen really company culture either shift um, and, you know, because of the pandemic and this like work from home time period for corporate employees as well. Um, are there any kind of changes that you see long lasting at JetFlu that were inspired uh, throughout this past year? Yeah, so there was actually a, a bunch of things. So one, I would definitely say just like most companies, we leaned into this virtual space. Very happy. And while we have gotten Zoom fatigued, and yeah. that is a very real thing, um, it has actually helped us better connect, I believe. I think that we have been able to connect with our frontline crew members in a different way as well. We've been able to kind of uh, bridge our CRGs and bring them together and even in, in a different way. So I think that this virtual format, while it definitely can um, be something that we can get tired of after time, I think that's something that we are going to continue. We're going to keep that around um, and uh, creating these opportunities for connection uh, within this virtual space. I, I do believe that we've seen um, we've been able to have a lot more people join us and engage in these conversations um, but than before because we have this uh, virtual format available. Yeah. I would also say that just generally our diversity, equity, and inclusion strategy has been, you know, revamped and reimagined due to the pandemic and all of the things that happened from the murder of George Floyd to uh, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement that really allowed us and other companies to start thinking about what can we do and how can we really truly make an impact. And from there, we started to look at what are those uh, different places where we need to improve it and how can we actually grow and make an impact and help our crew members, our customers, um, and our communities as a, as a whole feel more connected with JetBlue uh, as a whole as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of folks um, thought of diversity, equity, and inclusion in terms of employee resource groups and maybe even sometimes a, a nice to have, not a need to have. But over this past year, it's been a huge readjustment, reevaluation of what's working and what's not. Can you tell us a little bit more about kind of the reimagined diversity, equity, and inclusion strategy um, that you mentioned? Yeah, so one of the one part of it is to really, and the and the major part of it is to really embed diversity and equity and, and inclusion into all of the ways that we do business. So not just uh, making it something that um, the diversity, equity, and inclusion team does, but right. something that we all do. So we've actually have partnered with different teams and 
they have different goals and things that they need to be accountable for in order to embed diversity, equity, and inclusion throughout the organization. Um, the other major change that we did uh, was shift from just D and I to D E and I. So having that equity piece. So we're thinking about the people that we're bringing into the organization. We started thinking about um, our uh, our hiring practices and how we can start to mitigate bias. And we've rolled out um, new hiring standards to be able to mitigate bias there, in, in, including also making sure that we are having a diverse slate of people that we're considering, especially for leadership roles. We're looking at equity and making sure that there's that access to opportunity. So that comes with creating development programs and even programs that allow our frontline workers to move into support center roles um, and also creating more diversity within um, the flight and tech um, roles as well. Um, and then when we're thinking about inclusion, we've been thinking about inclusion, not just from um, the internal standpoint, but also externally. Mm -hmm. How can we make sure that our brand is exuding what inclusion actually means? How can we make sure that our customers feel um, included as well? So all of these different things, we've really been um, revamping and, and collaborating with various different teams to make sure that we're able to uh, make a difference there. We've made commitments um, in terms of our leadership. So when you look at... Um, JetBlue's leadership currently, we're working on it, but it's not as diverse as it could be. So we made the commitment to say, well, we're going to make sure that it is as diverse as we could, as it could be. So looking at representation from a minority standpoint, but also from a female um, and, and gender standpoint and making sure that we're increasing that diversity there as well. Yeah, I think uh, attaching those kind of goals, metrics, milestones, if you will, to just like these intentions is so important because as you were talking about all the different ways that you can have an impact at the organization and also in the community, it can be hard to keep track of everything and measure towards progress as well. Um, we've mentioned a little bit around crew members and frontline employees. How do you really prioritize diversity, equity, inclusion when thinking about folks who are in corporate and also people who are in the field as well? Yeah, I think that um, it's it's definitely sometimes a, a difficult situation. Um, I think that we the virtual space has definitely created a, again a lot more opportunity for us to connect further with our uh, frontline employees. But I think diversity, equity, and inclusion it um, is not just that engagement or that food flags and fun. You know, yeah. it's those actual programs that we are making that are making it an impact. So providing those opportunities for our frontline crew members or operations crew members to move into support center roles if they would like, that creates that, you know, equity and really that access to that opportunity, creating um, different policies that put D diversity, equity and inclusion at the forefront, and even looking at our hiring practices to make sure that we are bringing in diverse crew members from the support centers to our uh, frontline employees as well. That those types of DEI initiatives um, really do impact our, our crew members. And um, when we start thinking about engagement and just making sure that we build awareness around D DEI, we have several, we have six different uh, CRGs, but we call them crew member resource groups. And um, those are, are diverse, full of different work groups. And that's just another way where we are making sure that we're engaging all of our, our crew members. That's awesome. It sounds like you're really trying to meet uh, folks where they are in terms of, you know, wherever they sit in the organization, which I think is really important as well. And I know in terms of, you know, recruitment, retention, promotion, it's maybe a little bit easier to track those metrics. Are, they, are there any other KPIs? I know you mentioned policy changes as well that might take maybe a little bit longer for change in terms of KPIs for moving the needle towards diversity, equity, um, and inclusion at JetBlue. Are there any other factors? Yeah, I think that diversity, equity, and inclusion overall is very difficult to measure. Yeah. I think that um, the one thing that we do, and this also brings in our um, operations crew members as well, is we have to listen to that feedback. 
Um, and in order to really showcase how we are growing and how we're changing, we need to look at that feedback and see what kind of feedback we're getting over time. And that is something that's going to take a, a, a while. Um, inclusion is something that doesn't happen overnight. We can go ahead and hire a bunch of diverse candidates and raise those diversity numbers. We can make a bunch of different policy changes and we can say that we are extremely equitable. However, when we talk about inclusion, that's really how people are feeling. That's really yeah. talking about that culture. So what we are looking at are, is that feedback from our crew members, from those surveys, from those culture surveys, and um, just seeing how people are feeling, seeing how many people are attending these different courageous conversation events that we are having, and seeing how many people are engaging in those courageous conversations. If we see more people over time are comfortable to have those conversations, then we know that we're doing something right and that we're heading in the right direction. Um, so I think diversity, equity, inclusion, it's especially inclusion is so hard to um, to really measure because it is a long-term strategy. It's something that just doesn't happen overnight. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. And also in terms of seeing the, the results of all of the programming and policies and benefits that you're rolling out too, if you wanna know if people feel like they you know are part of the culture, you need to ask them and have that qualitative <laughs> data and continue to ask them as well. It's not a check the box, everybody feels included. We are, we're all good, so we don't have to work on it anymore. It is a longstanding commitment to employees, especially as you onboard new folks and um, you know, humans change over time. So you need to meet those needs continually. Um, yeah, yeah. Some Definitely. folks feel, you know, there is a school of thought that it is a pie in the sky idea that you can create this trust and transparency and psychological safety in, in the workplace. But it sounds like you really believe in employee listening and feedback. How do you see this culture of trust and transparency really manifesting in the workplace and in the business? Yeah, I feel like, um, I feel like that we, the, this trust and transparency is, it, it kind of, it, it comes on, on both sides of the coin. So we want our crew members to be able to be transparent and share how, how they are feeling and, you know, and, and use that feedback to be able to drive change. But we have to be transparent. We have to be able to say, these are the places that we want to improve. These are the places um, that we are not doing too well in, and these are the places that we can do better in. Um, so I think when we're thinking about that transparency and trust, it's really about making sure that we're having these conversations and we're having conversations with leadership, having conversations with uh, all of our crew members all around and making sure that everyone is involved in order to really uh, be able to connect better. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely agree that it is, it's too, it's a two-sided conversation as well. You need to build trust on both sides in order it for, for it to be successful. Um, one of the other topics of conversation that continuously comes up is everybody is doing a lot. And especially in a virtual world, there's like a little bit of a less separation between your personal life and professional life and burnout is definitely real. Um, what, how do you think about preventing uh, burnout proactively amongst the team, um, especially for like, working parents, people who are, you know, living at home, maybe alone and just um, just wherever they are in the world? Yeah, you know, burnout is definitely a topic that is close to me because I personally, especially someone in the diversity, equity, and inclusion space, particularly last year, was yeah. very difficult. Yeah. You know, people are looking at you to have these conversations and to be able to address what's going on, but you're still trying to compartmentalize and understand and, you know, really digest everything that's going on yourself. So yeah. um, it's definitely a topic that, <clears throat> excuse me, is important to me. And it's important to JetBlue. Um, we have talked about, you know, burnout, talked about, we've, safety is one of our values. But when we're talking about safety, we're not just talking about the safety of, um, you know, individuals as they're uh, working on planes. We're also talking about, which is very important, but we're also talking about the safety, that, that psychological safety and making sure that people feel comfortable. So, um, 
so in terms of, of burnout, we've been able to share different resources um, that our benefits team offers that uh, allows people to really prioritize their mental health, be mm -hmm. able to talk to different counselors, be able to have that time. Our managers are always encouraging our crew members to take that time to prioritize self-care. And one thing that we have done, and it was a little bit of unintentionally throughout the year, is there's been this steady stream throughout our heritage months. We celebrate, you know, all different heritage yeah. months. Our CRGs have really made this big effort to focus on mental health. So from having mindful leadership sessions to having yoga sessions to having sessions where people can just kind of vent and talk to each other, those types of things just allow us to one, create a sense of community and really allows us to prioritize our self-love and our self-care. And that's a, a, co um, a common theme that we have been reiterating to be sure that people are um, really having to manage that burnout because it is, it's a real feeling and it's, it's a real thing that does happen. And I can definitely say for myself, that's something that happened to me, but having people around me that understand what I'm going through to be able to talk to people and then to just be able to take an hour of your day and go to yoga, <laughs> that definitely, um, does, you know, make a little bit of an impact there. Yeah, it definitely makes a difference. And I think that's an important point to note, especially in diversity, equity, and inclusion work. It does require a lot of emotional labor. And oftentimes people do come to you as a person or the team to like educate themselves or ask questions and also seek answers. So it can be, it can be a lot. Um, but I also wanted to know too, like how do you recharge um, when you are feeling like you're on the edge of burnout or just like you need to take, you need to take an hour for yourself? So I am a big movie watcher. I love movies. Amazing. So, <laughs> so every weekend I take some time, my fiance and I, we watch, we pick a movie and we bet on who's going to pick the better movie. And uh, we go ahead and watch a movie together. And that's really how I just kind of relax. It takes me away from my phone. It takes me away yeah. from my laptop. It's it's something that I actually have to watch. I cannot do work and, and watch the movie at the same time. Uh, but that's, that's one thing I do. I also, I have my own therapist and I talk to them and I, I take that time to I just you know, share how I'm feeling, get some guidance on what I can be doing to, um, you know, prioritize my self-care even more. And um, I also had to learn how to say no. I think that is one skill that That's we awesome. often miss um, in, in all of, in, uh, not just in the diversity, equity, and inclusion space, but in, in all of our roles. I think we often miss that skill on how to say no and when it's appropriate to say no and I had to learn that especially last year I had to learn to say either I don't know and I haven't processed this yet and I don't know what to do or I can't do I cannot do this right now because I need to prioritize myself absolutely I I love that I think what is the saying when you when you say no to something it leaves an opportunity for another yes and it's just like no is a complete sentence as well, because there are so many things that are going on and prioritizing just your list of, you can't prioritize everything. And also you need to focus on that self-care like you talked about as well and self-preservation in order for you to, to continue on and find that joy as well. I think another kind of point that you brought up too is just a trend I'm seeing over time and in these conversations is people are more open to talking about mental health and therapy. I love therapy. I also have my own therapist. Is there a trend you're seeing in diversity, equity, and inclusion that people and companies need to really hone in on in order to be successful in the future? Yeah, I think, well, the one trend that I would say um, I definitely agree. Mental health is one trend that that needs to to, to stay. Um, one thing that we need to continue to hone in on, continue to hone in on that that um, you know that that mental health and making sure that we're prioritizing that self care, making sure that we're understanding that those external factors, those things that are happening outside are affecting our crew members when they walk into the door, whether it's virtual or a physical door, that it's affecting, it's affecting us. So um, I think that's something that we, that, that trend we need to keep. I also think that um, diversity, equity, and inclusion over the last year has become a, a trend within itself. 
Yeah. And I think as we're looking forward for diversity, equity, and inclusion, we need to be sure that it doesn't just become a fad. I I already can see that that downward um, you know, yeah. that spiral where diversity, equity, and inclusion is kind of like, oh, that's the thing that everyone's talking about. It, it's it's not that important, but mm -hmm. making sure that it stays top of mind and making sure that it is something that we are all prioritizing. And that really comes with, I believe, in the way that um, we, we are embedding it in the culture. So now it's something that we can't just ignore anymore because it is, it's not something that just this team does. It's something that we all do. I would also say in terms of just general trends in diversity, I would love us to start talking a little bit more about the multi-generational workforce. Um, right now, we are having so many different generations that are working within um, companies and organizations, and um, I do see that being a conversation that is going to be upcoming and something that we need to focus on a little bit more. Um, and talking about the all of the bias that can come with working, you know, with different generations in the workplace, um, looking at the different training that may be needed, um, and just looking at how we can make sure that we continue to promote inclusion um, as we're as we have all of these different generations in the workplace. I think people don't talk enough about ageism, yeah. and um, that is something that that's a trend that we definitely need to continue to address. How do you see ageism really coming up in the in the workplace? Is it like more in the recruitment process, or is it kind of within uh, the company culture itself when folks when folks join um, as well? I think ageism can come up in in various different ways. So I definitely think um, it can come up within the hiring process. Um, specifically at JetBlue, we have created a, a more structured hiring process to help mitigate biases yes. such as ageism and you know any kind of um other discrimination so i definitely think that that um that hiring process is, is a place where those biases can can come up um i also think that generally when we think about age in the workplace we're talking about when we talk about diversity equity and inclusion we often think of gender diversity we often think of um you know uh race and ethnicities so we're very cognizant about what we say and what we do that relates to race gender maybe even uh a, a religion yeah. um you know, or our identities, our gender identities. Um, but we're not always as cognizant of thinking about what we're saying in relation to age and those biases. For example, um, there is a, a common uh, misconception that uh, older uh, people may not be as tech savvy. Mm -hmm. And that that is a common misconception. Right. And that type of uh, thinking, that type of stereotype, that type of bias can really uh, showcase in various different ways where an older person may not be given a certain project because they are, because they think that they may not be as tech savvy, um, you know, where they may not be invited into certain groups because they think they may not understand the technology that's associated with it. So that misconception and many others in terms of millennials and younger generations as well can definitely manifest, manifest in the workplace. Um, and I think that those types of things we need to begin to address and we need to be sure that we are, when we're talking about diversity, we're not just talking about gender diversity, we're not just talking about gender, um, we're not just talking about identities, we're not just talking about uh, race and ethnicities, but we're also bringing age into that conversation and figuring out what are those biases and stereotypes that exist around that and how we, we can begin to address those. I think that's a really important point because I, I agree with you that it's often left out of the conversation. And I think it's also important to note that I think what we've seen in the past, especially with heritage celebrations, which is amazing and it's really important, but it's one piece of the puzzle. And I think you can't just look at, you know, race, gender, age in like a specific month or a specific time period. It's all intersectional and having that conversation is also uh, really important too. So I definitely appreciate that kind of insight from, from that question as well. 
Yeah, definitely. I, I think it's I think it's really important. I, I think that as we're as we're continuing to grow in diversity, equity, and inclusion, there are going to be so many different things that are continuing to come up. Um, so it's important for us to be able to stay abreast of these trends and be able to address them um, within our organizations and be able to make sure that they. Um, connect with the greater picture. So it's not just, let's talk about age today. Let's talk about race today. Let's talk about, <laughs> yeah. about you know abilities today. It's really, how are we talking about all of these things together? Yes, in conversation with one another, absolutely. I think that's really, really important. Is there something that um, related to your, your job in this work that what's the hardest part of your job that maybe people would be surprised to know about um, as well? I would say um, the hardest part of my job, and it's funny because I just had this conversation with someone else, a friend who's also in diversity and inclusion. The hardest part of my job is actually saying that I don't know. I think that um, oftentimes within the diversity, equity, and inclusion space, um, people do expect you to know a whole lot about <laughs> um, a whole about, lot. <laughs> yeah, about a whole lot. So yeah. about every culture, about everything oh that's God, going yeah. on, every single trend, you should know it. And and sometimes I put that pressure on myself, like, Clarissa, why don't you know this? Why, yeah. why are you not aware of this thing that just happened? So I think that that is, is one of the hardest parts of the job. I think also another um, hard part is sometimes, especially, and, and I'll be honest with, um, everything going on with the Black Lives Matter movement. As a Black woman myself, that was something I was extremely passionate about, something that I am extremely passionate about. I did work for a civil rights nonprofit organization. So um, really advancing and making sure that uh, the Black community is able to uh, strive toward that equity is really yeah. important to me. And I think sometimes um, a, a difficult part is taking myself and saying that I, we, I have to be able to um, connect with all different communities and, mm -hmm. and extend my passion, not just for where I, ident I identify, but where, you know, I, where my, my work lies and, and all of these different communities that are disadvantaged. So I think that sometimes you can get focused, especially with everything that happened last year, was so focused on um, the, you know, the Black community where I had to take a step back and say, well, let's look at the other communities that are being disadvantaged right now. Let's look at how the pandemic is Im impacting uh, the LGBTQ plus community mm -hmm. and, um, you know, in employment in that community. Let's look at the AAPI community and see how the violence has increased there as well. There are so many communities that are being impacted. And again, mm -hmm. it's not a just about having these one conversation this one conversation, but really looking at it, how discrimination and these things really impact us all and, how, and all of those intersections. So I think sometimes you can get so focused on one, one place where you want to make an impact, right. where then you have to really think about these intersectional conversations. And I think it's more intentional than it is something that just happens naturally. You have to intentionally say, Let's look at the intersections here and let's see how we can make an impact across the board because that is going to actually impact diversity, equity, and inclusion as a whole. I love that. I think that is definitely a, a call to action, if you will. None of this, especially with information in terms of doing the internal work for other folks as well, it will not just happen. You have to be super intentional about it. There are so many different priorities that are out there, you need to actually have a plan in place as well for yourself to really understand what's happening, be an advocate. You're clearly passionate about this work, which I also love and have no doubt that you're making a huge impact in, in the work that you're doing. Um, do you have a proud moment that you would like to share with us as well, whether it's a small win or a big win where you are in that moment of flow, like this is this is why I do all of this, all of this work and the fruits of my labor in this, this moment. So, um, yeah, I have a couple, but I would definitely say most recently, um, all of our CRGs got together and we organized a Courageous Conversation event uh, with all of our, uh, with all of our CRGs. It was specifically around um, AAPI Heritage Month, but really talking about the, having that intersectional conversation around discrimination and how these different things kind of connect to each other. And 
to be able to see some of our crew members come off of the line and share their experiences and be able to see on the, and just even within the chat, that yeah. connection being made, that was definitely a proud moment because it really made me feel about the, what I talked about, having intentional conversations about intersectionality and how we can really come together as community. That's something that we were able to actually bring to fruition um, and something that our crew members genuinely appreciated and, and felt good about. And, and post that, being able to see the messages that were shared that said, I'm just so happy that I was able to share my experience with yeah. you know, other crew members. That definitely was something that um, I was super proud about. I was super proud of our CRG leaders, um, all of our CRG members for pulling it together and, um, and for the DEI team for their work on it. So I, I think it was um, a great moment for um, JetBlue as a whole. Yeah, that's a great moment to share. And it's also something that you were able to create this really safe space and really build that trust with, with folks to really share their personal story and share that at work as well, I think um, is, a big, is a big moment that needs to be celebrated. So definitely thank you for, for sharing that. Yeah, definitely. It was definitely a, a great moment. And we are looking forward to having more of those conversations together. Absolutely. Is there anything I know we talked um, about a couple of different topics today from your experience to coming to JetBlue, all of the work that you're doing here and just general trends in the industry, but anything that I didn't ask you that you kind of want to touch on at the, the end of our conversation or a point that you want to reemphasize as a key takeaway for folks who are listening? Um. I think I would just reemphasize that um, diversity, equity, and inclusion is a space that is continuing to evolve. Um, it is a space that I don't feel that we're ever going to have um, one concrete answer for because it's continuing to evolve. Um, so in order for us to be good DEI practitioners, in order for us to be um, DEI advocates um, and inclusion leaders, we have to be continuous learners. We have to be, um, we have to want to learn from each other, learn from other sources, be able to uh, really build and grow those connections um, to be able to be change agents and um, create that change and that impact for us all. So I think as long as we're being those constant learners, as long as we're continuing to educate ourselves, as long as we're continuing to have conversations with each, each other and really get a little uncomfortable and you know push ourselves into having more conversations, I think that's when we're going to see DEI become something that's not just something to do, but something that we all do. Um, and, you know, my goal with diversity, equity, and inclusion is that one day I'm going to work so hard that I will work myself out of a job because <laughs> DEI will just be, it'll just be everywhere and, and we won't need that, you know, person to really you know, championing it because it will be already be with, uh, with us and it'll be something that we're all doing on a daily basis. But I think until then we need to continue to be learners and continue to make sure that we're sharing our knowledge and getting that knowledge as well. Absolutely. It'll be part of everyone's job description officially to be DEI culture champions and really look at things yeah. from an intersectional lens, making things more equitable for processes. That is my ideal world as well. Um, <laughs> but I, I love that. And I enjoyed speaking with you. Thank you so much for taking the time this afternoon. It was great. It was great speaking with you as well. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, of course. And as a reminder for our listeners, All Voices believes in the power of everyone to speak up at an organization and thinks it's a requirement for the organization to succeed. We'll speak soon.